There are a few places that I can think of that came about the way this one did. In front of the city hall in Guelph, there is a monument, a tribute to a dreamer, a writer, a poet, a renaissance man in the true sense. He came up with a scenario that historians say may be the single most important attempt at settlement in Canadian history. And that's just for starters. It is also interesting that the foundations of the community that he laid in the arts and education continue to perpetuate. They're now part of the tradition. This is a story, non-fiction story, for all who believe in the power of dreams. This is the story of the house that John built, Guelph, Ontario. daily life is surrounded by it. Inheritance, living in cultural expression and in bricks and stone. Uh, Guelph uh, has so much of its character, its 19th century character intact. Uh, essentially, uh, interest and slow growth together have managed to maintain a place that has more interest in it than most. They used to say about Guelph that you could be born here, get married here, be buried here, go crazy here, go to prison here. Uh, you, did, you never had to go away from town. For any experience you wanted, it was all here. Guelph is its university, rooted a century past. Today, amongst its credentials, an important force in agricultural research. Uh, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and it has to have a certain sense of ecstasy. Measure 87, please. What John Galt referred to as the Festival at Guelph, nurtured early by one Edward Johnson, 1878-1959. John Dalton. Uh, 1941 Collier's article really summarized Johnson's career, I think put it into perspective when they said that Johnson really was no prodigy. He was 28 before he made it big in light opera, that is Lieutenant Nicky, over 30 before he sang true opera in Italy. He was more than 40 years of age when he debuted at the Met and was 55 when he finally became general manager of the Met. Certainly every child today that he has a music class in school really owes something to Edward Johnson because if it hadn't been for him, uh, perhaps music wouldn't have been part and parcel of today's life among school children. The 
Eduardo Di Giovanni. His stage name, while singing in Italy for eight years, forever carried Guelph in his heart. Gil Stelter. His father owned and ran what was the King Edward Hotel. Uh, and the family lived in the hotel. And in one of the postcards in the Johnson collection, he uh, draws uh, a circle around one of the windows in the hotel and says, this is where uh, I grew up. This is the family uh, place in the hotel. And it would have looked out over across Carden Street, across to City Hall, to the Winter Fair and Market Complex. So the family would have had a day-to-day -day view of the Winter Fair, the exhibition and the market character of Guelph. I think having grown, having spent his youth uh, as he became a teenager, living in a hotel environment, I, th I think had a uh, seminal influence on his life. Guelph really uh, is the product of one man's imagination and vision. Uh, unlike many Canadian cities which slowly evolve over time, uh, Guelph uh, sprang into the brain of one Scottish novelist, John Galt, who believed that developing an agricultural area uh, could best be done by planting a town in advance of settlement. Uh, and he came uh, up with this idea of uh, a company that would buy a whole big chunk of land and develop it and develop it by planting towns in the wilderness before anybody lived, uh, before any farmer lived there. Galt, in fact, believes very strongly in the company fostering a community notion. In one of his novels, refers to the fact that each individual is like a twig, easily broken. But if you bind these twigs together into a bundle, they become a lot stronger. Uh, and so he's constantly emphasizing the notion of collective community as a way of dealing with the frontier problems. Superintendent of the Canada Company, a land development enterprise financed in England, prolific as an author, John Galt has left his mark on Canadian urban design. Today, making her mark in the literary world, almost blind since birth, Acclaimed in many countries for her fiction and poetry for young readers, Jean Little's Guelph is a place of varying ideas. The visual part is not the important part. Um, it's there, it matters, but a man asked me if uh, when I write, when I describe gardens and things that I can't see, did I, had I lived other lives? Was it from other lives that I got these, these uh, images? And I told him, no, it wasn't from other lives, it was from reading and anything I haven't seen, and there are lots of things I haven't seen, I feel as if I've seen because I've seen enough, that I had enough vision before that I could sort of extrapolate from it. It's, it's lovely to come from a place where, where you have so much that, that is behind you, where the, the hollyhocks that grew in your backyard, you can still remember, and the fringe tree that grew, and, and all these little little uh, bits and pieces are still in your head. At the confluence of the Speed and Aramasa Rivers, the seat of Wellington County in south central Ontario, Guelph was incorporated as a village in 1851, a town four years later, and in 1879, a city. I never see a steeple peering over the woods without thinking of the growth of Jack's beanstalk. John Galt. He believed that a strong uh, a series of churches within the community was necessary for a civilized, stable society. He has a tremendous respect for uh, the local Catholic Archbishop, MacDonnell. He and Galt together walk over the site, and they choose the most prominent hill on the site as the location of the Catholic Church. Then, the major street from the focal point runs to the Catholic Church. So the focal point, in each case, radiates to someplace. Each of these points is terminated by a major future building. None of these are built, of course, during Galt's day. But he envisaged this kind of thing. But the plan itself 
is more than just a land developer's quick survey in order to make money by selling off lots. It's a plan that envisages a certain kind of community. Galt's plan allowed for all of this to happen. And it did. The place that offered services and commodities to an incoming population, a population that brought expertise in agriculture and livestock, would grow to embody that knowledge, developing it into the educational facility of today. The Guelph of today also includes another influence. Arriving earlier this century, mainly from the north of Italy, Italian heritage continues to be celebrated here. Arkle Springs, the community's water supply, encouraged the early growth of industries, including brewing, which itself gave rise to the name of Sleeman, one of Guelph's greatest enterprisers, leaders, and benefactors of the last century. At its turn of the century heyday, city pride couldn't be kept under its hat as its industrial base prospered. Referring to clearing the first road, Galt once commented, this gigantic vision did not cost much more than the publication of a novel. I've written a book about a kid in foster care, a book about a child whose her father is Jewish and her mother is a Gentile, kind of a lapsed Anglican. And she has become a very real character to me to the point that I started writing her poetry and she's had a book of her poetry published and one of her poems is called So I'm Proud and it goes, our history teacher says, be proud you're Canadians. My father says, you can be proud you're Jewish. My mother says, stand up straight, Kate, be proud you're tall. So I'm proud, but what I want to know is when did I have a chance to be Spanish or Hindu or short? Conflict would force Galt back to England, but of Guelph he wrote, the transactions will be memorable in the history of what must be a great country. May we have your attention, please. Be a train from Toronto, Brampton, is now arriving on route to... It was 1851 that Parliament passed an act concerning the construction of a main trunk line throughout the entire length of the province of Canada. The push was on as the impact resounded through the town of Guelph. An awful lot of what is really interesting and significant architecturally in Guelph is built during the 1850s. The earliest stone churches, the magnificent city hall, it's when stone first becomes used in a major way for all building. Workmen put up their modest cottages, the businessmen put up their mansions, the churches are put up, uh, businesses are built, and they're all put up in local limestone. And so Guelph really achieves its character in this railroad boom decade. By the time of Confederation, the Grand Trunk was the largest railway system in the world, running unbroken from Sarnia through Montreal and on to Portland, Maine. These were good times, with industries in the community benefiting by reciprocity with the United States and from the American Civil War. The 60s and the 70s, Guelph grows incredibly quickly by local standards, but from the 1860s on, Guelph establishes a number of very sophisticated local industries that have very little to do with the local agricultural community. Bell organs, sewing machines, a hat trick by Biltmore, its reason for being, Peter Cote. 
It was largely because of the water quality, which had uh, come in from the Arco wells. And apparently the other reason was that there was quite a large uh, ethnic population at the time of immigrant people who um, lended their skills to this type of work. The headwear business remained very strong into the 40s. I suppose it peaked uh, in early 50s. Probably one of the biggest uh, impetuses in the headwear business during the 80s was Indiana Jones. He probably single-handedly um, uh, got the attention of young people especially who uh, would take that not very new shape uh, and put it on their head. And uh, subsequently, that probably was our strongest seller through the 80s. And uh, heading into the 90s, uh, we feel there's about four or five major influences coming together all at the same time, maybe for the first time ever. It was constant with my plan to invest our ceremony with a little mystery. A dramatic Galt knew the value of pageantry. In 19th century Guelph, uh, there is no distinction between high and popular culture. Uh, you could tell Shakespearean jokes on the vaudeville stage and everybody would get the joke. Public performances would be uh, attended by all segments of the community. Uh, culture is a, a uniform thing. Uniformity in its streetscape and individuality in construction is the staging that gives the community a distinctiveness. In Guelph, the limestone, when first quarried, is quite soft. And generally, it meant that those things could be carved quite easily by somebody with even modest skills. One of uh, my favorite buildings is the House of Heads. Uh, Matthew Bell's house on Water Street, in which he built a little Gothic cottage facing the Speed River, uh, and uh, he carved Gothic elements into the stone. The Gothic in the stone and the heads that he carves uh, are perhaps the best notion of what Gothic is. Uh, Guelph stone does allow for this kind of uh, creative imagination. Guelph was always an anchor in uh, Edward Johnson's life. Despite the fact that he was a citizen of the world, he had uh, he worked, lived and worked in New York City, traveled to Europe regularly to scout stars later on when he was the Met, uh, he always returned to Guelph. Guelph was his first love in life, and Guelph was the starting point for making Canada a singing nation, as he conceived it in 1928. Music was for the masses, and he wanted children to be exposed to a bona fide music education program. Encompassing the fine arts, the university upholds the spirit fostered by the community's founding like father. As I say, keeping these merely as a guide of where they are and what they're doing. With a student and faculty population of approximately 20,000, and as the largest employer, the University of Guelph plays a key role in the life of the city. Recalling early impressions. My friends were all people in books, and fiction was, gave me other worlds to live in where I could totally, you know, I could just move in and I could be Heidi instead of being this handicapped child. So, and, and other, other, I think I was a perfect little victim and I was a tattletale and I was teacher's pet and all these things made me very unpopular. It's funny now, I have kids come up and say, my father was one of your friends in school and I ask what the child, you know, now it's their grandfather, but it used to be their father. I ask what his name was and he was one of the people who made my life a misery, but in his memory now, we were bosom friends. The settlement that benefited from old world expertise in agriculture became leaders in the field. Encouraging the formalization of education in farming 
opened the door for the beginning of today's university. When the provincial government uh, decides or looks around for a spot to put the provincial agricultural college, uh, Guelph turns out to be its choice, understandably, uh, with the kind of sophisticated scientific approach that was already being taken here to uh, stock breeding in particular. Uh, the scientific approach to agriculture continues to be one of the defining characteristics of the community. Uh, and it all ties in, it's all of a piece with what Galt originally foresaw. An amalgamation of three colleges, dating to its birth as the Ontario Agricultural College in 1874, the University of Guelph is a leader in crop sciences and in areas of veterinary research. Today it contributes to solving the complex agricultural problems of developing nations. Inheritance. Guelph's day-to-day -day life is surrounded by it. More than bricks and stone, it is the crystallizing of one poet's imagination. Its size, its continuing modest size, that is slightly less than 100,000, uh, makes it a manageable community. Uh, I'm involved locally with, with several neighborhood groups, one in particular in my own neighborhood, uh, and we've made a difference in convincing city officials to uh, put in a secondary, or to work toward a secondary plan, for example, based on the notion that residents of a particular region of a city, a neighborhood, should have some say in how that, that uh, part of the city is developed. And Guelph is small enough and manageable enough that you can have this sense of community. So it's a place where I've been ever since I was a little girl, where every street that I walk has memories, and it has memories. It has the buildings that are there now, and the ones that were there 10 years ago, and the ones that were there 20 years ago. It's a great rooted feeling that when I go to church in the vestry, there's a picture of the session, and there's in one of these bearded old gentlemen is my grandfather. And, uh, and that my father could tell me many memories of Guelph, that all of that's part of it. A part of it that these are the streets I played on when I was a little girl, played cops and robbers and things. And um, it's just, I belong here.